that is just crazy. God. <laughs> that is so fast. That is just crazy how fast this car is. <laughs> Right, guys welcome to another video and look what i have here a porsche taycan turbo this car looks pretty amazing the walk up to it is just fantastic so let's see is it a true porsche i have a 911 gasoline powered flat six a gts and i love my gasoline powered car and i'm a driving enthusiast so what is this taycan like i'm going to take you along for the ride we're going to get into some of the specifics of this car how this one's set up and built and I'll tell you, is it really a true Porsche, even though it's an electric vehicle? Does it give the same thrills that a 911 would? Well, we're gonna find out and you're gonna come along for a ride. I just wanna give a shout out to Porsche of Launchmark for allowing me to uh, borrow this Taycan Turbo for the day, specifically Gary Minsky, who is one of the brand ambassadors here. I bought two of my 911s from him. Porsche of Larchmont nor Gary are paying me for this video, but they are providing uh, this Taycan for me to review and share with you guys. So with that said, let's jump on into the Taycan. <music> All right, guys, we're in the Taycan, and let me just put it in normal since we're in town. The suspension settings are a little bit more relaxed. When you are in Sport and Sport Plus, the car lowers down by 22 milli millimeters. So now that I'm back in normal, the car is back up in height. The ride is even more supple. That's one thing that Porsche has really done right is this suspension. Around town, this car is just as docile as can be. It's just a normal, normal luxury car. The interior fit and finish in here is just, is just pretty amazing. You know, it's all the leather is finely done. It's up to the standards of a Porsche, as it should be at this price point. Nice feeling leather everywhere. Even this curved uh, dash, I thought would carry a lot of glare, but not that much. I mean, everything on the screen is tack sharp and beautiful and colorful. This car comes with the passenger display for the Porsche communication management system. So the passenger over there can also operate the navigation and music and other functions housed in the Porsche communication management system. So that's pretty cool. And it gives this a whole futuristic look all the way across. The haptic touch actually feels pretty nice and you can use this trackpad down here or touch the screen directly either way it works to ma manage your your Porsche management system here I mean I love this compact steering wheel it feels great to the hand I wish I had this smaller diameter steering wheel in my 911 now I have to say as I'm looking in the rearview mirror it is kind of like a shallow little slit I mean I can see what I need to see it's like you're in a trap roof hot rod car how low it is in the back again i can see the car behind me but visibility everywhere else is fantastic and the headroom is great too i'm six foot four i was able to sit behind myself i set my seat for my position here i even turned off the car which pushes the seat back by uh an inch or so and i was still able to get behind myself no problem the foot well was a little tight to get my big size 13 shoe into that foot well but once you're in you're totally comfortable so even if you're a six foot three person sitting behind a six foot three person you could still be comfortable in these back seats even though this is a tighter package than say the panamera so as a daily driver it's super, super comfortable. And I'm in normal mode, and if I put my foot down, I mean, it just jumps by 10 miles an hour in each second. So as each second goes by, it's like, I don't wanna say what the numbers are, but they just go up in 10 mile an hour increments. I mean, just the amount of torque is amazing. And this is in normal mode. So what do we have here? This car is 616 horsepower and 626 foot pounds of torque. These are monster numbers. Now in launch control, this car goes up to 670 horsepower, which is just incredible. The torque still stays the same, 
and it just will rip your face off. I mean, I did a launch control earlier with my wife in the car and she was mad at me. I mean, she got mad. She was like, that almost made me throw up. I mean, that's how much G-force pushes you back in the seat when you do launch control. It's just, it's intense. So zero to 60 in launch control takes three seconds according to Porsche, and that's probably very conservative. Um, quarter mile will be done in 11.1 seconds, and that's also probably conservative. And those are just monster numbers. And you have the comfort of a sedan, you have the comfort of a ride, you've got, it's so quiet in here. What I like also about this car is it's not huge. You know, it's a lot smaller than the Panamera. It feels nice and compact. I do feel the weight, but because the center of gravity is so low, it doesn't really affect the driving experience. I'm just aware that there is a lot of mass here compared to my 911. But the car doesn't feel cumbersome in any way. All right, let's do a launch control. I'm gonna put it in Sport Plus. That primes everything. It lowers the car down by 22 millimeters. God damn! That is just crazy! It just throws you back. Alright, let's do this again. Here we go. God. Oh my goodness! It just throws you back in the seat. Launch control in a Taycan Turbo is an experience. And notice, you can do it time and time and time again. Whereas some other electric vehicles like Tesla, you could do it maybe once and then everything has to cool down. So that's what's so great about Porsche. They engineered this car for drivers. They know people love to drive their Porsches. They want to be able to maximize performance and have fun. And wow, look at this. Look at how it handles on these turns. Oh yeah, I mean it's awesome. I'm going through some really tight turns here. My camera gear is flying all around. I'm pulling crazy G's. And you know, I can't tell. I mean this car is supposed to be, what? 5,000 pounds, but you can be super precise with it. It'll handle any turn you throw at it. Wow, this car, it's a Porsche. It's handling the turns now. This car also has PDCC. So this is my first time driving a car with PDCC, which is Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. And it's just keeping the car very, very flat. Just the control of the car, it just keeps it flat. So what does PDCC do? Well, what it does is the roll bars are electromechanical. So they are controlled by a computer and they can stiffen up depending on that roll of the car to keep the car flat. So if you're rolling this way, it'll stiffen up the roll bars a little bit to keep the car very centered and very flat. And I could feel that the car was just totally flat, which gives you confidence, which gives you speed. It's a technology to enable you to go faster and to counteract the balance of physics, kind of, if you will. You know, because it's keeping the car super, super flat and you don't feel like the car is sloppy and rolling all around all over the place. This car also has rear wheel steering. So doing a U-turn like this is super easy. When you have rear wheel steering, the, the rear wheels will turn the opposite direction of the front, which essentially shrinks the turning radius. So at low speeds, the car feels more nimble. And then at high speeds, the rear wheels turn with the front. So therefore it keeps that car feeling very stable at high speeds. So I just felt it there at that U-turn, you know, the turning radius on this is very, very tight. And the car just feels very nimble. And again, I'm impressed. This car is a 5,000 pound car and I'm taking these turns like nobody's business. I mean, this, a car this heavy shouldn't behave this way. And these are on all season tires. Could you imagine if this was on like super sticky tires? That would be, it would just be crazy. I have to say I'm impressed with the handling of this car and that's something that in my first test drive I wasn't able to test. We were on a highway pretty much going in a straight line. So yes, I was able to feel the incredible g-forces as you put the foot down and you're accelerating so hard. But 
I'm pleased to report that the handling is just as good as the speed. This car does it all. It's got, it could be a daily driver. It's got plenty of room in here. It's got a supple ride. It's quiet. So you don't feel like, you know, you're bombarded with noise at all times during your, during your commute. Oh, somebody behind me has their radar affecting my radar. Uh, so you feel like you're comfortable during your commute. The seats are plush and beautiful. All the materials are wonderful. But yet you have this screaming monster. Well, not screaming. It's very quiet. You have this monster performance as well. I mean, it really and truly does it all. It's way more comfortable than my 911. I mean, I'm in a Sport Plus, and this air suspension is doing its job by keeping the ride very, very supple. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, how are they doing this? <laughs> you know, it's black magic. No, it's technology and software, you know. Um, so this has PASM, much like my 911 has PASM, but there's this processor that they've added to this particular version of PASM that is really making adjustments up to, I think like 200 milliseconds. They call it 4D technology. So computer wizardry that's constantly, constantly analyzing the suspension and adjusting the dampening of the air suspension to get it just right to provide you with the best ride. Oh wow, look, feel this, look at the handling on this is just amazing. I could drive this all day. The one thing I will say about this car, when you're driving it around town, you will be noticed. People will be pointing, looking, staring at this vehicle. And it's a beautiful thing to look at. It's so futuristic looking, but it doesn't look wacky. This looks elegant. It looks like a Porsche because of all of the design cues designed in on this. It looks aggressive. It's just a really beautiful piece of art. You know, it just looks so good. So it's no, not a surprise that you're gonna get a lot of looks when you're driving around town in this car. So if you wanna be inconspicuous, this may not be the car for you. Most of the braking is done by the electronic motors. So that kinetic energy that's created by slowing the car down using the motors just gets, that energy gets put right back into the battery. However, you, you really stand on the brakes, then the actual brake calipers do grasp the iron discs and haul you down. Because the physical brakes are not used that often, their iron is prone to show rust. If you've ever washed your car that has disc brakes and soon after you finish washing the car, you'll see that there's a little bit of rust on the iron. Since these brakes aren't used as often, that could stay. So these are called Porsche surface coated brakes and they're coated with par uh, tungsten carbide. And tungsten carbide is an incredibly hard substance. It's, it's not as hard as a diamond, but it is very, very hard. And as a result, it prevents any kind of rust. And also, there's very little brake dust that is emitted from these brakes. When you look at these brakes, the calipers are white. When you see white calipers on a Porsche, you know they are the, the coated discs. To get the most range, you're looking at about 201 miles of range a normal charge. In day-to-day -day use, I don't think I have a real concern about range. If you're spending this kind of money on a vehicle, you'll probably have the uh, charger installed in your house, so it'll charge up the car no problem. You just use it every day like you would a normal car. Since I do use my 911 to travel to from New York to Baltimore, that's probably where range would become an issue. There are systems in this car to help you manage that. It'll even route you to your destination to make sure that you pass those stations. So it'll do that kind of research for you. And that's one of the cool things about the mileage management system built into this car. So that would mitigate it. If you get to a 800 volt supercharger, it'll charge up the Taycan in about 20 minutes. 
So there are ways to mitigate any concern about range. But look at how fast this thing is. This is crazy fast. Look at that. You can just pass anybody just like that. I mean, just the, this power is just crazy. Larchmont loaned me this car. I'm a driving enthusiast. I like to drive. And this car likes to be driven. Now this car has this a performance sound option that came a part of the performance package. Porsche says that they recorded that sound based on the electric motors being on a dyno and then of course they pipe it into the speakers. I, I like the sound, it makes the car sound very Tron, very futuristic. It's pretty thorough this car. Yeah, I like it. The trim feels nice, everything's quality. Again, I love the steering wheel. The, the diameter is, is great. It feels good. It's got the right amount of girth to it. It's very, very, all the materials feel really top notch. I cannot get over the speed of this thing. It's just instant torque. It's not, there's nothing like instant torque. As much as I love my naturally aspirated, GTS. This is a whole nother level of power. I love listening to my flat six engine. It really adds to the enjoyment of my Porsche. The sheer speed of this car makes up for the lack of noise. I mean, it's so quiet. It's kind of relaxing, but then you put your foot in it and it's crazy speed. It just builds upon builds. It's relentless. Not only is it fast in a straight line, but it handles. And that puts a big, big smile on my face. So that begs the question, you know, with an EV this good, is there anything to be concerned about with losing gas-powered cars? I mean, there's still something about the sound of a gasoline-powered car, particularly a naturally aspirated car, that thrill going up to 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 RPM that adds to the whole drama, which I think is the direct opposite of this. But it, nothing can match the instant torque that this car has. I tell you, this car, this is a Porsche through and through. This is a performance car. Porsche did not spare any expense in developing this car to behave like a Porsche, to behave like a sports car. I am pleased to report that. This great. All right, guys, I just did some runs in this car and I can tell you, this is a real Porsche. This is the real deal. And it'll give you thrills, even if you're used to the gasoline powered engines. I'm impressed. All right, guys, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Leave comments down below. Does the Taycan look like it's a positive future for the driving enthusiasts? Are you gonna miss the sound of gasoline engines, that exhaust note, that naturally aspirated sound? Are you gonna miss all that? Or is that just a relic of the past and we just need to get on board with these EVs and just the amazing performance that they can provide if they're engineered that way? So leave comments down below, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.